Chapter 8, Reconciliations. Before we go any further, please make sure that you have completed Baseline Assessment 8.1 in order to ensure that you understand and remember the basic concepts that you learned last year. If you haven't already done this, please pause this slideshow and do it now. Why do we need to reconcile? Well, all business transactions involve two parties, the business and whoever else they are dealing with. In this case of reconciliations, we are going to consider the relationship between the business and the bank and the business and the creditor, for example. When we are looking at these two parties, it is important to compare the transactions of each because we might need to update our records if the bank or the creditor has included a transaction that we are not aware of. It is also useful in order to identify errors, either errors that we have made or errors that have been made by the other party, in other words, the bank or the creditor. It can also be useful in order to identify and possibly even prevent fraud. If you don't do a reconciliation and fraud is taking place, it is unlikely that you would pick it up as easily. Please note, however, that this is not the main reason for doing a reconciliation, just an added bonus. In order to do a bank reconciliation, you need to keep in mind that this is the most important one that we are looking at, as cash carries the highest risk of any assets in a business. It is the most liquid and therefore what the people want to steal. You also need to remember that the debits and credits are reversed when you are looking at the bank statement, as the bank statement is prepared from the bank's point of view. Since we are drawing up a bank reconciliation also from the bank's point of view, in other words, as an extension of the bank statement, the debits and credits on the recon statement will also be reversed. In other words, if the bank is supposed to increase for, as a result of a deposit, the amount should be credited. If, however, it should be decreased, you would need to show it in the debit column. This is what it will look like if you are going to use debits and credits to do the bank reconciliation. And this is how you've learned to do it last year. However, in reality, it can be drawn up in a number of different ways. Quite simply, the bank reconciliation statement is for the purposes of the business and possibly the auditor at the end of the financial year. In other words, you can use whatever method suits the needs of your business. Another way of drawing it up is by simply adding and subtracting the amounts instead of worrying about columns for debits and credits. This may certainly seem easier as you don't need to worry about the fact that the position is reversed. It is also the method that is very commonly used at university, so if you study further, it will make sense to you. Personally, I certainly find it much more logical. All that you do is you start with your bank statement balance as before, you add your deposits, and you subtract your checks or payments. Make sure that any payments are shown in brackets. Alternatively, you can show plus and minus signs to indicate whether the bank balance should be increasing or decreasing. At the end, the amount of the bank statement plus deposits minus payments that are outstanding should equal your bank account balance. So this is the check that you can use. Of course, if you are a small business, you might decide to keep this much more informal. As long as you keep some record of unreconciled entries, in other words, those entries that you need to compare to the bank statement next month to see if they do in fact appear. Of course, these days, with the wonderful software programs available, most reconciliations are computerized. The format will vary depending on what system you are using, for example, QuickBooks versus Pastel. 
generally you will still need to check the bank statement manually as you need to tick off the entries that appear on the bank statement and then electronically tick off or indicate which items have actually appeared in the accounting records of your software. However, these days it is possible for the software to download the bank statement and then do the bank reconciliation automatically. Of course, you will still need to understand what is going on so that when the, a software program shows you the transactions that have not cleared, you will understand how best to deal with them. The difference is calculated automatically in both cases. This certainly makes it easier as you can see immediately when there are no differences, your reconciliation is complete. This is an example of what a QuickBooks reconciliation might look like. It is quite detailed and shows all the items that you have in fact cleared or ticked off by comparing them to the bank statement. However, you can also see the uncleared transactions at the end and the difference between the cleared balance or the amount on the bank statement and your bank balance or the ending balance. This is what a pastel reconciliation might look like. It is a little bit more close to what you have studied where you start with your bank statement balance and then add and subtract outstanding deposits and payments to get the amount that is in your bank balance. Now that you hopefully remember how to do basic reconciliations, please complete the following exercises 8.2 to 8.5 in order to check that you are able to analyze a reconciliation and answer the questions very carefully.